introducing the best bike money could buy in 2002. My name is Evan and this is my newest project, a Specialized S-Works FSR XC Pro and it's definitely seen better days. In 2002, this bike brand new cost $3,600 but I was able to pick it up for only $300. The former owner of this bike said that this bike has been sitting around for 10 years, unused and unserviced. But this bike was tricked out for its time and definitely an early adopter of many modern features that we use today. It has a RockShox air fork, a Fox float rear shock, and it's capable of using disc brakes. The biggest eye-opener for today's standards on this bike are the V-brakes front and back. We all use disc brake these days and they have tremendous stopping power, but I come from the BMX world where I've always had V brakes. So to bring this bike back up to its former glory, we have a ton of work to do. Man, this thing is light. So hearing that this bike has been sitting around for 10 years, I don't dare even compress the shocks because the seals could be corroded and there could be no oil in the shocks. So before I even roll around on the street, I'm gonna rebuild both shocks. These gold stanchions might have caught your eye, but it turns out Fox wasn't the first one to use gold stanchions. This is a RockShox Sid Race dual air with titanium nitride coated stanchions. And I guess they have a pretty bad history of flaking off during servicing, but man, it's super light, sub three pounds. But I did notice some oil in the stanchion, so I'm gonna do a full rebuild. And I've definitely never done a dual air servicing before, and I've never done a damper servicing before. Hope it goes all right. Well, with the lowers off, I noticed that there was no oil at all. And there's some sort of corrosion right here. And uh, it smells so bad. I, I gotta get out of here. This air shaft is held in by this base plate here, and apparently there's a specialty tool to remove this base plate, but I don't think it's sold anymore. Well, it turns out it's the same size as a 15 millimeter hex nut that comes on the hub axle of cheap bikes. And I tried to use this 15 millimeter hex socket, but its edges were rounded, so I couldn't get a good grip. This is the air shaft for the dual air assembly. And for 2002, this is pretty tricked out because the travel can be converted from 80 millimeters, which is kind of low, down to 63 millimeters of travel. And who in the world would want only 63 millimeters of travel? Now with the air side finished, it's time for the damper side. And this is my very first time servicing a fork damper. I hope this works out. With the entire stanchions exposed, I'm noticing that there's a ton of damage on the stanchions. I'll have to keep an eye on that to see if any oil is leaking out in the future. And this damper servicing is super messy. Just a quick reminder, this is not a how-to video by any means. If you want to service a fork like this, I'll have a link to the service guide in the description below. So I'm having some issues because the service guide that I have is from 2003. And these forks are 2002. And in 2003, they actually used air pressure in the damper, but mine doesn't have an air valve. So I'm kind of at loss for words right now, and I can't find any 2002 service guides on the internet. So 
I'm really just gonna have to take a guess at this. So I'm putting everything in this tube here and it looks like this is where the air goes. And then anything below this is where the oil goes. And I think that this is the damper and the fluid goes in and out of this and that's what controls the rebound. So I could be completely wrong, but I'm definitely just doing an educated guess here. So I really hope this works out. So I figured it out. The manual from 2003 says the Sid Race has a pure delight damper, but this damper is called the pure damper with climate control. So the service manual does have the instructions that I needed. Whew, I was getting worried there for a bit. So now I have to take apart the damper that I just put together, drain out all the oil that I just put in and do it the way the service manual says. So the damper servicing is all done and man, what a mess. I was just getting oil everywhere. But now it's time to install the lowers, but I've actually had a change of heart. Looking at this bike, this bike is something special. I think I'm gonna paint these before I install them because these forks are beat up, man. So before I do that, I'm gonna service the rear shock. These O-rings can be pretty difficult to remove, especially on the air can. I found it's best to grab a metal pick and stab directly through the O-ring to easily hook them out, but still be super careful not to nick the metal and damage any part of the shock. And also pay close attention to the order of the O-rings. If you can take it apart, you can put it back together. So I'm sitting here with all the old O-rings and this service kit that I bought off Amazon and I noticed that it's missing an O-ring and I'm not even sure what to do. Let me do a little research and I'll be right back. All right, so this service kit says it's for all Fox float shocks from year 2000 to present. And that's super cool that Fox made that decision 20 years ago. And that tells me that this shock is not obsolete. On the Amazon page, lots of other people are saying that they are missing this same exact O-ring which is called the shaft eyelet O-ring. Well, luckily I did a little bit of measuring and research and I think I found the correct matching O-ring and I'll have the measurements on the screen right there. So I found the O-rings and I ordered them on Amazon and they came in a pack of 100 for $8. Let's see if it's matching. Moment of truth, it matches. Woo, yeah, oh man. I don't know what I'm gonna do with 100 O-rings. Well, let's wrap up the servicing. Wow, this air can is super hard to get threaded. And after like six or seven tries, I got it threaded by keeping a very firm upward pressure. Well, the rear shock service is complete and doing a simple air can service can be so easy, especially on modern shocks like this one. I didn't even use a service manual this time and I'd love to take this for a ride, but I need to start prepping for paint.